Yo, what's up, man? This is your boy, Yash Chosen One. So are you, because you believe in the word, baby. We are in the book of Jasher, chapter 56. And we see the building of a nation. Uh, we see that the uh, <coughs> Joseph had his family invited into Goshen, into Egypt. And uh, it's all a plan by Yah. The whole world, as we speak now, is a plan by Yah for his people Israel to eventually take over and be the ones to run the new kingdom. Well, Yehoshua will run it for a thousand years, and after that, it's given to the Most High. But the kingdom is meant for Israel and for other nations to cleave unto us. All right, chapter 56, Book of Jasher. Let's do this. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years, and the days of Jacob and the years of his life were 147 years. <clears throat> so that's Genesis 47, verse 28. Also taken away from, you know, people thinking they could only live to 120 years old. No, that was the time given for those before the flood to get right with the Most High. He gave them 120 years to repent of what they was doing, and they couldn't do it, so... You know, throw that out the door. At that time, Jacob was attacked with that illness, whatever this illness was, of which he had died. And he sent and called for his son, Joseph, from Egypt. And jo Joseph, his son, came from Egypt. And Joseph came unto his father. So whatever it's illness, you know, it doesn't describe what illness is. Uh, Genesis chapter 47, verse 29. But. He has some kind of illness. And Jacob said unto Joseph, unto his sons, Behold, I die. When the Almighty of your ancestors will visit you and bring you back to the land, which Yah swear to give unto you and to your children after you. Now, therefore, when I am dead, <clears throat> bury me in the cave which I have sent in Machpelah and Hebron in the land. That's uh, Genesis 49 verse 30. Of Canaan <clears throat> near my ancestors and Jacob made his son swear to bury him in Machpelah in Hebron and his son swore unto him concerning this thing I right, was Judah all of them you know, swore to <clears throat> bury their father and he commanded them saying serve Yah your power for he who deliver your fathers will also deliver you from all trouble and Jacob said call all your children unto me and all the children of Jacob's sons came and sat before him. And Jacob blessed them. And he said unto them, Yah, the power of your father shall grant you a thousand times as much and bless you. And may he give you the blessing of your father Abraham. And all the children of Jacob's son went forth on that day after he had blessed them. And on the next day, Jacob again called for his sons. And they all assembled and came to him and sat before him. And Jacob on that day blessed his sons before his death. Each man did he bless according to his blessing. Behold, it is written in the book of the law of Yah appertaining to Israel. And Jacob said unto Judah, see, spoken to Judah, I know, my son, that thou art a mighty man, for thy brethren reign over them. Thy sons shall reign over their sons forever. See that? Judah gets to reign over the sons forever. Only teach thy sons the bow and all the weapons of war in order that they may fight the battles of their brother who will rule over his enemies. Now see, this is why I think you should have a firearm. You should know a firearm. You should have a firearm. You should know how to utilize a firearm. You should know how to use one. You know, to protect yourself for one thing, you know, you know, when things go down, because this is not a very friendly world. So you should know the boat. You know, I'm not saying going to go serve the military or whatever, but, you know, take a firearms class, get you a firearm so you can protect your dog on self. And Jacob again commanded his sons the next saying, behold, I shall be this day gathered unto my people. Carry me up from Egypt and bury me in the cave of Machpelah as I commanded you. I don't want to be buried in stinking Egypt. I don't want to be around those 
Kushites and Mitzrayim and all them people, man. I don't want to be around these nasty people. How be it? Take heed, I pray you, that none of your sons carry me, only yourselves. And this is the manner you shall do unto me. When you carry my body to go with it to the land of Canaan to bury me, Judah and Shekar and Zebulon shall carry my buyer at the eastern side. Reuben, Simeon, and Gad at the south. Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin at the west. Dan, Asher, and Naphtali at the north. Let not Levi carry with you. For he and his sons will carry the Ark of the Covenant of Yah with the Israelites in the camp. Neither let Joseph my son carry, for as a king, so let his glory be. How be it, Ephraim and Manasseh shall be in their stead. Ah, how about that? So these Levites weren't supposed to do it because they're holy. They're, they're, they're the uh, priests. They're the priesthood of Israel. Manasseh and Ephraim will be in the stead of Joseph. Okay. Thus shall you do unto me when you carry me away. Do not neglect anything of all that I command you, and it shall come to pass when you do this unto me, that Yah will remember you favorably and your children after you forever. And you, my sons, honor each, each his brother and his relative, and command your children and your children's children if you serve Yah, the power of your ancestors all the days, in order that you may prolong your days in the land you and your children and your children's children forever. When you do what is good and upright in the sight of Yah, your power to go in all his ways. And though Joseph, my son, forgive, I pray thee, the prones of my, thy brethren and all their misdeeds and the injury that they heaped upon thee. For the Almighty intended it for thine and thy children's benefit. That was the Almighty's plan. I'm not saying all the time in this life to... You know, if somebody wrongs you, you forgive them. But this was a plan from the Most High. You know, you can forgive, but never forget what, if somebody hurt you or did something to you, never forget that. Forgive them, but never forget it. And though Joseph, my son, for, okay, and oh, my son, leave not thy brethren to the inhabitants of Egypt, neither hurt their feelings. <clears throat> for behold, I consign them to the hand of the Almighty, and in thy hand to guard them from the Egyptians. And the sons of Jacob answered their father, saying, <clears throat> O our father, all that thou hast commanded us, so will we do. May the Almighty only be with us. And Jacob said unto his sons, So may the Almighty be with you when you keep all his ways. Turn not from his ways either to the right or to the left, and performing what is good and upright in his sight. <clears throat> For I know that many... And grievous troubles will befall you in the latter days in the land. Yea, your children and children's children only serve Yah, and he will always save you from all trouble. <clears throat> He's going to save you from all trouble. <clears throat> now, you, your children's children, somebody's going to go through something grievous. One, some, some generation or generations will go through something grievous before the Most High works with you. And like you see, we're flesh. We don't have much time. But when we're operating on Yah's time, it's an eternity to us. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when will this ever stop? Such as our forefathers in, in uh, this virgin daughter of Egypt that we was in when they came here on those slave ships. I, I just couldn't imagine the things, the atrocities that they go through, that they went through, man. Just horrible. The things that they made, the things that were done to them, the things that they saw. And it shall come to pass when you shall go after the power to serve him and will teach your children after you <clears throat> and your children's children to know Yah. Then will Yah raise up unto you and your children a servant from amongst your children. And Yah will deliver you through his hand from all affliction. And bring you out of Egypt and bring you back to the land of your fathers to inherit it securely. And so will be the way here as well. 
See, back then in that Egypt, he raised up Moses to bring us up out of that. And once again, we are in Babylon. He's going to raise up, up raise us, raise us up a servant. And he's going to take us up out of this Egypt again. And Jacob ceased commanding his sons, and he drew his feet into his bed. He died and was gathered to his people. That's Genesis 49, verse 33. And Joseph fell upon his father, and he cried out and wept over him. And he kissed him, and he called out in a bitter voice, and he said, Oh, my father, my father. And his sons' wives and all his household came and fell upon Jacob. And they wept over him and cried in a very loud voice concerning Jacob. Genesis 50 verse 1. And all the sons of Jacob rose up together and they tore their garments. And they all put sackcloth upon their loins. And they fell upon their faces and they cast dust upon their heads toward the heavens. And the thing was told unto Osnath, Joseph's wife. And she rose up and put on a sack. And she with all the Egyptian women with her came and mourned and wept for Jacob. Here's this Hebrew man. Here's this Hebrew man, and we have the Egyptians crying for us. So he was a great man. Not only for burying Joseph, who saved the Egyptians, but he was just a great man known throughout throughout the lands. And also all the people of Egypt who knew Jacob came all on that day when they heard this thing, and all Egypt wept for many days. We'll stop right there. Once again, a great man bore great sons and a daughter in Dinah. And, uh, you know, we have the whole earth pretty much uh, weeping over uh, Joseph. I mean, uh, Jacob. All right, man. That was an interesting chapter. We'll get back with you on uh, uh, the continuation of chapter 56. Shalom.